PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds has various maps with a variety of locations to land, loot, and survive. Many of these locations are unique, one-of-a-kind compounds that attracts dozens of players at a time. Navigating through the chaos can be difficult if you don't know what you're dropping into. Because winning the battle means surviving the drop. This is Drop Guides. On this episode, we're going to be taking a look at Hacienda del Patron. Located northeast from the centermost point on Miramar, just east of San Martin, Hacienda's main building is a large multi-leveled structure with a variety of rooms to loot, tight, straight corridors, and a handful of open sight lines. Let's start by taking a look at some of the interior rooms and go over their callouts, as well as potential loot spawns, sight lines, and tactics. On the south side of the main building are two large double doors granting you access to the first floor living room which plays host to a few potential loot spawns. Other than the main doors to the outside, there are five potential points of entry to this room. Starting from the left to the right, you have the first floor hallway, a doorway leading to the outside under the balcony, the stairs leading to the second floor, another doorway outside to the driveway on the east side of the building, and lastly, the south garage. The garage itself has two other points of entry by way of one of the two doors being open, as well as a large glassless window on the easternmost side of the room. While the garage has loot spawns as well, its biggest strength comes by way of its large sight line down the first floor hallway into the kitchen. Back into the living room, there's also a small closet attached to the southeast side that is only accessible from this main room. This closet also holds a potential loot spawn, but can be a bit of a dead end if you happen to get stuck in there. Working counterclockwise around the main building will take you into the first floor hallway. This hallway is home to four different rooms. On the north side of the hallway are two bedrooms which have barred windows that look into the pool area. The south side has another small closet-like room and a third bedroom with an attached bathroom. Each of these rooms have potential loot spawns but leave you vulnerable to patient players as these rooms only have one point of entry. With the exception of the south side bedroom which has a large window that can be vaulted in and out of to the outside. At the end of the hallway is our second key location on the south side of the main building, the kitchen slash dining room. This area has some of the best single room cover since it only has three points of entry and a large waist high barricade in the form of some of the knocked over tables. The kitchen can make for a great place to hold up and defend since it provides two key sight lines, one down the first hallway to the east and another across the pool into the bunkhouse to the north. Attached to the west side of this room is a doored entry to the pantry. The pantry, much like the closet in the living room and off the main hallway, is another potential loot spawn but with only one way in or out, so you'll want to be careful as to not get pinned down by other players. The large main opening to the north side of the dining room leads out to the pool just below the second floor balcony. Following out of the kitchen slash dining area to the west is a slightly raised walkway that brings you up to the south game room at the southwest corner of the structure and the lounge area to the west. The open elbow combining these two rooms is a great two point sideline to contest one covering the east entrance from the dining room and the other to the north towards the sauna. Atop the pool table in the game room is one of the room's potential loot spawns, so be sure not to overlook it. Both the south game room and the lounge are home to several potential outside entrances since both rooms offer large windows that can be vaulted in and out of. Due to their height, however, vaulting in from the outside can be risky since it requires a full vaulting animation to traverse them, meaning your character will be vulnerable to players both inside and outside watching these windows for threats. The lounge itself is also another strong position, similar to the kitchen since the couches help to provide cover from the hallway sightline from the dining room. Attached at the northwest corner of this room is a bar and a wine closet, both with potential loot spawns. The east side of the lounge provides both its outside entrance as well as another set of large windows out to the pool. A word of caution when choosing to hold this position near the windows, however, as players lurking above in the balcony will have a significant sightline advantage when looking down into this room and can easily take you out before you have a chance to see them. The final room on the west end of Hacienda is going to be the sauna, located through the lounge to the north. The sauna provides some of the best first floor sightlines, granting you vision to the north game room attached to the bunkhouse, the pool, the first and second floor breezeways, the balcony, as well as an angle into the dining room. Apart from vision into other areas of the main structure, it also provides good sight lines towards the open garage structure and crates to the north, as well as a view into the courtyard and stables to the east. 
Just like the South Game Room and Lounge, the sauna has tall large windows that can be vaulted in and out of, but just like the lounge, are taller and take longer to get into from the outside. One tip for anyone looking to loot the sauna quickly is to try and avoid vaulting in and out of the hot tub in the east side of the room. You're much better off jumping in and out as to avoid getting caught out while going through the vaulting animation. Similarly, the large open window to the west has a slight ledge which can be tricky to vault through. For this, you'll find it much easier to jump onto the ledge and crouch out through the window, unless of course you had a full sprint and going through your vault. Not only does this make getting through the window much easier, it also ensures you're minimizing your downtime. As previously mentioned, our next point of interest is going to be the bunkhouse located slightly detached from the main structure to the north. The bunkhouse itself has one main entrance just to the north of the pool. Despite this, it still boasts several points of entry. The north side of the bunkhouse has three large windows that can be vaulted in and out of. To the west of the main bunkhouse is the north game room, which has another pool table similar to the south game room. The north game room, despite being a relatively small part of Hacienda, has five potential points of entry. The first being the door connecting to the bunkhouse, the door to the outside, located on the north side of the room, two more large vaultable windows to the east, and a door on the south side of the room leading into the showers. The showers themselves contain two potential loot spawns and two points of entry, the one mentioned in the north game room and the second leading back outside just west of the bunkhouse entrance from the pool. Out the east doorway from inside the bunkhouse leads into the interior conference room. Loot here can be found both on the floor in the south side of the room and on the conference table itself. Along the north wall of the conference room is a door which leads into another bathroom. This bathroom is a single entry room with two potential loot spawns. Out the east door to the conference room will take you into the north garage. Unlike the south garage, the north garage's layout is a little less obstructed by objects and has its open garage door on the right instead of the left. With that said, its other possible points of entry include a large window on the south side of the garage and a door that leads out to the north breezeway and access to the upstairs. Making your way up the stairs will reach a long narrow hallway with two windows flanking either side. Both of these windows can be vaulted through or used as vantage points overlooking the pool and the west end of the compound. At the end of the hall, the wall to the west opens up granting access to the balcony. The doorway to the south leads inside to the second floor where you'll find the staircase leading back down to the south entrance on the first floor, an office room to the east, a small bunk room to the south which has a large vaultable window to the outside, and a second floor hallway leading to the west. Heading down this hallway reveals the main interior sightline for the second floor. Just down the hallway on the south side is the master bedroom which includes the main room itself, a closet, and the master bathroom behind a closed door. Although this room is only accessible from this hallway, the large window on the south wall can be used as a secondary point of exit to the ground level outside. Finishing our way down the hallway opens to the largest room on the second floor, the den. The den is host to a few different loot spawns which can be found around the large table at the east side of the room and atop the platform near the fireplace to the west. Just like a lot of the other larger rooms in Hacienda, the den has two large windows to access the outside, yet since they're on the second floor, they only work as exits and not entrances. The largest and most prominent entry point, however, is going to be the double door size opening to the north side of the room leading out to the balcony. The balcony is a highly contested area within Hacienda due to its vantage points over both the pool and its surrounding areas, the openings to the other rooms from the outside, as well as the quick access and sightlines to the second floor hallway. Not to mention this is also an area with several loot spawns increasing your chances of finding a weapon quickly upon landing. Just to the east of the balcony's seating area is the balcony stairs, which leads us down to the largest and most hostile area of Hacienda, the pool. The pool area without a doubt is the highest risk versus reward factor in regards to drop locations at Hacienda. Its available loot spawns are plentiful but not always populated on each round, making those who choose to drop here either easily geared up or left to scatter inside as quickly as possible to find loot which, given their accessibility, most of the main interior areas on the first floor can be easily reached to provide cover and other potential chances for finding loot. One last quick point of interest regarding the pool area is the first floor breezeway connecting the underside of the balcony and the elbow under the second floor breezeway. This area can make for a great two-point cover position, but be sure to keep the door to the main south entrance closed as to not expose yourself to any players traversing through this portion of the compound. Now that we've discussed in detail all the various rooms and locations that make up Hacienda, let's dive into where some of the best places to land are. As we mentioned already, the pool provides the widest variety and flexibility in terms of lootable positions. 
Whether that means acquiring weapons and gear from either inside the pool or the hot tub, the patio just outside the dining room, the paths along the exterior walls within the compound, or just inside any of the entrances to the other room, there are more than enough chances to find your tools of survival. Some of the other notable drop locations include the main entrance on the south side of the compound, either the north or south garage, the archway on the east side leading into the pool to the west or to the breezeway to the south, the north side of the bunkhouse slash north game room, and the balcony on the second floor. There are other exterior locations that can work as well, but due to many of them being accessible only through large tall windows, getting inside to find weapons can cost valuable time in those first few moments after touchdown. Of course, there are two exceptions to this. The first is a rock on the north side of the sauna just outside the window, and the second is a rock just outside the west wall of the lounge. Both can be used to enter the building quickly from the outside by running up the rocks and pressing the vault key just as you're about to hit the window. Speaking of vaulting, let's take a look at a few other traversal options by way of the vault and ledge grab mechanics. The rest of these clips will demonstrate a good portion of the found locations available to reaching the roof with the ledge grab mechanic. A good tip for pulling off these maneuvers more efficiently will be to check your key binding settings and ensure that your vault and your jump commands are bound to separate keys. Once you've jumped to the ledge you wish to grab, simply holding your assigned vault key will initiate the animation and elevate your character to the top of the ledge. Although this video has been focused on the main structure of Hacienda itself, it's worth taking a moment to speak about the various buildings and loot opportunities scattered around the compound. Working counterclockwise from the bottom, we have the long narrow two-story to the south, the stable and the hay barns to the west, the carport, garage, tower, guard shack, and crates to the north, another tower just to the east of that, another guard shack in the driveway to the east, and lastly, one lonely tower to the southeast of the main compound. Plenty of players enjoy using these locations to avoid the risk of dropping directly into Hacienda. Of course, it's worth noting that their loot potential isn't nearly as high as the main structure and can oftentimes leave you short-handed. For those that do find weapons in these perimeter buildings, a common strategy is to wait out some of the fighting and sneak inside to take out any remaining players within the main building. The last particular piece of information I want to share about Hacienda is the fact that this is also the home to a potential vehicle spawn as well. Much like the loot, this won't be available for every match, but when it is, you can find it located between the main compound and the stables to the west, located here. I hope you found the information in this video guide helpful, and if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, please let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you feel I've missed anything or have any tips of your own you'd like to add, those are encouraged as well. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Drop Guides, and until next time, good luck out there.